I'll say, tell them to ouse, and they say ouse, and the dog uh, spits it right out. They're like, see, he knows out. I actually choke my young dogs out. So I grab them by the first saber, I lift up, opposite reflex, the more I do this, the more they what? Don't want to let go. I'm building frustration, don't look at the guy to the right in the restaurant. So the whole time I want my young dogs, I'll get out later. What I don't want to do is, um, when the dog comes back, and Joel, this is one thing I would change, so she, there. so she came back to you with the Kong toy, and this is why I like a string, and right when she came back, what was her reward? Ouse. Yeah. So it was like, well, that kind of sucked. Right. I came back to mom, and I got an out. Right. Um, the dumbbells, to give you guys points, how many points are the dumbbells? 40. 40. You knew it. You're not supposed yeah. to answer. Yeah. <laughs> 40 points. Your flat retrieve is 10. When your dog retrieves, you want the same speed out as the same speed back. What you end up seeing a lot of times in a trial, a dog goes 2x out and 1x back. That will kill you on points. Why? Prey drive has been fulfilled. So even with the starting of this right now, even with Joelle's young dog, I want her to sprint back to what? Engage. So you coming back to me is great versus you coming back to me, ouse. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. You guys understand that, right? So now let's talk about corrections. This is the very first correction I give my dog. Well, I might give him something like for um, attacking another dog or wanting to uh, later on. But on a young dog, my very first correction where I'm cognitively aware I'm going to do it, I teach name recognition. I'm convinced 99% of the dogs in the United States don't know their name. They don't even know their name. And they have the, what I call the threatening repeating parent. You know, Slayer, 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 Slayer. The dog, um, what I said, delayed obedience is disobedience. So now let's say I say his name five times and Slayer comes on the fifth time. I'm kind of screwed. I taught delayed obedience, right? So now I'm in a pickle. Do I reward you? Because I rewarded delayed obedience. So I, there's four levels of corrections and it starts with the name. So I let my dog get a good sniff. You know, it's, we're going on a walk. Say it's a seven month old puppy. It's sniffing. I have my long line on, maybe my 20 footer sniffing. I have food on me, always with a young dog or a toy. But if I'm gonna have to correct where I use food, and I go, Slayer, if, he's, if his head doesn't turn within one thousandth of a second, I give him a pop, pop. He comes back to me, I use my bridge, good, and then I click. So when I say your name, your head's gotta be whooping around. So when I start my foos, when now, because my very first thing that I do, first correction is what? Name. Steps five through eight, what have they learned? Look. Remember, so step five, look, good. Nope, good, click. So now they know two things before I even start my foos. They know the word look and they know their name. That's very important. Because once I say the word foos, they don't want to look at me. Now, why doesn't a dog want to look at me a foos? In fact, I should do this one time. I should blindfold one of you, grab you by the hand, and take you for a walk. Do you know how hard that would be for me to take you by the wrist? Short, and take you for a walk through this? Is this guy going to walk me into the table? Now I'm asking my dog to completely have trust on a foos. You look and you have no clue where you're going. You talk about a trust exercise, foos is trust. So it's the most unnatural thing because there's five things that come into fruition in one exercise. A dog can't be wide, touching, forged, lagging, it must be looking at me. Five things. That is very difficult. I'm glad they moved the foos into the 15 point range. I worked too hard on my foos. So when I say the word foos, they don't know what foos means, and I'll go over the steps later on on how I teach foos with both hands behind. So when I say foos, they don't know this word. But I'm walking like this in an open field. Foos, now I say step five, look, slayer. His head comes up, click and pay. So I have two things now that I can start my foos with. Step five through eight, look, name, this one is all positive. Name is my first negative, Slayer. Where do, we, where do I use my dog's name in a trial? Around the blind, a revere, Slayer. When I say your name, that head better be whooping around. It, not, it better not be like, in a, like my middle name is James. So Joel James. I can't imagine when I was growing up, my dad saying Joel James and be like, in a minute, I'm watching you. I would have been dead, <laughs> like goodbye earth. <laughs> Because I knew, I knew my father and I knew name recognition. When my name is being called, Joel James, the minute it was serious. So I have several ways that I call my dog's name. Slayer, happy. 
Slayer. If I say it like that, Joel James, Slayer. My very first throw on a dumbbell. So this is one thing that I want with Joelle to do on a leash. So when she was playing ball, guess what my brain's already thinking about? 40 points on dumbbell. I'm already thinking about that. So she got the Kong. You guys see what she did? She kind of looked around a little bit. Okay, I'll come back to you.